Welcome to this deep dive from HIV RNA Test Guide. If you're looking for reliable info on HIV testing and uh, access to over 4,500 labs across the country, well, you're definitely in the right place. Glad to be here. Today, we're really digging into some uh, pretty exciting progress in HIV treatment, things that could maybe move us beyond needing daily pills. Exactly. We've got two specific approaches on the radar today, EBT-101, that's a CRISPR gene editing therapy, and the HTI therapeutic vaccine. Right. And for you listening, especially if you're proactive about your health, about staying informed on HIV care, these are potentially huge shifts. Absolutely. So our mission today is to really understand what makes these two so promising, how they work, you know, where they are in development, what it all might mean down the line for managing or maybe even uh, curing HIV. Okay, let's start with EBT-101. CRISPR gene editing sounds very advanced, almost sci-fi. Can you unpack that for us? What's the basic idea? Sure, think of it like this. EBT-101 uses um, incredibly precise molecular tools, tiny scissors almost, and their job is to find the HIV genetic code that's actually hidden inside a person's own cells and then snip it out. Snip it out. Yeah. So not just suppressing the virus like current drugs. Exactly. The goal here isn't just management, it's potential elimination, getting rid of the virus right at the source where it integrates into our DNA. And I read it targets multiple sites in the HIV genome. Why do that? Ah, uh, yes, that's really key. EBT-101 is designed to cut the HIV DNA in three separate places. In three places. Right, so it makes it much, much harder for the virus to escape. It would need to mutate in three very specific ways all at once to get around the editing. It's like a putting triple locks on it. Makes sense, to prevent resistance. Precisely, the ultimate aim, complete removal of that integrated HIV DNA. Wow, okay, so where does this stand now? Can people get this treatment? Not yet, no. As of, well now, 2025, EBT-101 is in phase 12 human clinical trials. Phase 12, so that's early stage, focused on safety. Primarily safety, yes, in a small group of people. And they're also looking for those first hints that it's actually working, that it's doing what it's supposed to do. The thing that really jumps out, I think, is the idea of a one-time treatment. That feels revolutionary compared to taking pills every day for life. It absolutely is. That's the huge potential draw here, a single intervention that could potentially lead to a cure. It's a massive shift in thinking. Have the earlier studies shown promise, like in labs or animals? Very much so. The preclinical work, mostly in animal models, was quite encouraging. They saw reductions in HIV DNA around 80 to 90 percent. 80 to 90 percent, that's significant. What are the human trials that are happening now? What are they seeing? Well, the data is still early and it's from a small number of participants, remember. But they have seen detectable reductions in the amount of virus hiding in the body, the viral reservoirs. Okay, that's good. And importantly, so far, no major safety concerns or side effects have been reported in these individuals. That's crucial. Yes. And researchers have also been able to confirm, using biopsies, that the CRISPR system is actually editing the viral DNA in the patient's cell. So it's doing the job it was designed for. It seems to be, yes. But, and this is important, we need to be clear, a full confirmed cure hasn't been reported yet in these early trials. Right, right. Early days, as you said. So if someone were to participate in a trial like this, what's the experience like? From what we know, it would likely start with a single intravenous infusion, you know, like getting an IV drip. Okay. Some participants have reported mild, maybe moderate flu-like symptoms afterwards, but the really distinct part is the follow-up. It's intensive. How so? Lots of monitoring, regular lab tests, but also biopsies taking small tissue samples to really track the virus and check for any long-term effects of the gene editing. Hmm. So a bigger upfront commitment, maybe? compared to just taking a pill. Definitely a higher initial burden in terms of clinic visits and procedures, but it comes with that immense hope, the potential payoff of a cure. I can only imagine the psychological side of that. The hope must be huge, but maybe some nervousness about, you know, gene editing. Absolutely. It's gotta be a complex emotional journey. The possibility of being cured of HIV is, well, life altering. But yeah, it's natural to have questions, maybe some anxiety about a novel technology like this and what it might mean long term. Which brings us to safety. What are the main worries with EBT-101? The primary concern really is the risk of off-target edits. Meaning? Meaning those molecular scissors accidentally cutting the human genome in the wrong place, not just the HIV DNA. And because gene editing is still relatively new, the potential long-term genetic impacts are still being carefully studied. Okay, that gives us a good handle on EBT-101. Let's switch gears now to the HTI vaccine. This sounds like a totally different approach working with the immune system. That's right, yes. 
The HGI vaccine, sometimes called HIV cat T cell immunogen, is what we call a therapeutic vaccine. Therapeutic, meaning it's for people who already have HIV, mm. not preventative. Correct. It's designed to help people living with HIV by boosting their own body's immune response, specifically to fight the virus more effectively. How does it actually do that? What's it teaching the immune system? It works by introducing specific pieces of the HIV virus to the immune system. But crucially, it uses parts that are known to be conserved. Conserved, meaning they don't change much between different HIV strains. Exactly. These are regions less prone to mutation. The idea is to stimulate a stronger response from the T cells. Those are key immune soldiers to recognize and attack cells infected with HIV. By focusing on these conserved bits, the vaccine aims to train the immune system against the more fundamental parts of the virus. So the goal here isn't necessarily eradication, like with EVT-101, but more about control, hmm. getting the body to manage the virus on its own. That's the main objective, yes. Long-term viral suppression without needing daily antiretroviral therapy or ART. The hope is it could turn HIV into something more like other chronic conditions, where your immune system keeps it largely in check. And where is the HTI vaccine in its development? How far along are the trials? It's also progressed into human trials, yeah. and the results so far have shown uh, pretty encouraging safety signals and some early signs of efficacy of it working. Okay, promising. What specifics can you share from those trials? Well, the HIV CAT phase three trials, for instance, showed that a decent percentage of participants, somewhere around 40 to 60%, had improved immune control after they stopped their regular art. Meaning their viral load stayed lower for longer? Yes, their viral load was reduced compared to what might be expected without art. They didn't see complete remission or eradication, but some people did have a delayed viral rebound. It took longer for the virus levels to climb back up. Interesting. Any patterns in who responded best? Yes, actually. Yeah. The best responses tended to be in individuals who already had a relatively strong T-cell response against HIV before they got the vaccine. So it's like it amplifies an existing, maybe weaker response. That seems to be the idea, yes. Enhancing what's already there. And what would the patient experience be like for this vaccine? It's more like a traditional vaccine schedule. It involves multiple injections uh, into the muscle spread out over several months. Okay, side effects. Generally reported as mild, things like headache, feeling tired, maybe some soreness where the shot was given, pretty standard vaccine stuff. And the follow-up. Routine monitoring, maybe occasional viral load checks. It's generally a lower initial burden compared to the intensive monitoring for gene therapy. And, you know, the format is much more familiar, like getting a flu shot or other vaccinations, which might feel psychologically uh, more straightforward for some people. That makes sense. Now, HIV is known for being quite variable. Can the effectiveness of this HTI vaccine differ depending on the specific strain someone has? That's a really critical question, and the answer is yes, it potentially can. Even though it targets those conserved regions? Even then. While those regions are less likely to mutate, HIV is incredibly diverse. Mm. There can still be subtle variations between different strains, different subtypes, even in those conserved areas. And those small differences could affect how well the vaccine works. They could influence how well a person's T cells trained by the vaccine, recognize and respond to the actual virus they have. Other factors matter too, like which strains are common in different parts of the world, and even a person's own immune system genetics. Their specific HLA type, for instance, affects how T cells see viral pieces. But you said the early trials showed fairly consistent results across common subtypes. That's true, yes. The initial studies did show pretty consistent immune responses across the most prevalent HIV-1 subtypes. But it's absolutely vital to keep doing research in really diverse populations worldwide to fully understand how well it works against the broad spectrum of HIV strains out there. Okay. And in terms of safety for the HTI vaccine, is the main factor just how well someone's immune system responds. Essentially, yes. Its effectiveness is closely tied to the strength and the specific nature of the individual's own immune response and their genetic background. So if we put these two side by side now, EBT-101 and the HTI vaccine, can you give us a quick comparison, the core differences? Sure, let's break it down. Target. EBT-101 goes after the HIV DNA itself inside our cells. HTI targets HIV proteins to stimulate the immune system. Okay, delivery. Delivery. EBT-101 is envisioned as a one-time IV infusion. HGI is multiple vaccine shots over time. Goal. Objective. EBT-101 is aiming for potential eradication, a cure. HGI is aiming for long-term immune control without daily meds. 
risk. Main risk factor. For EBT 101, it's the potential for off-target gene editing. For HTI, effectiveness depends heavily on the individual's immune system. And how quickly might we see results? Timeline for results. With EBT 101, you might see effects measured in weeks Definitely to months. Definitely something to mull HTI over. HTI needs time for the immune system to be trained and respond, so likely a longer time frame for observing peak effect. That's a great summary. Very clear. Now, what about using these together? Mm -hmm. Or in combination with other things? Is that being explored. Oh, absolutely. Combination therapies are a really hot area in HIV research right now, not just for these new approaches, but generally. Why is that? What's the advantage? Well, if you combine strategies, you can attack the virus from different angles simultaneously. You might target the hidden reservoirs and boost the immune response. This could make it much harder for the virus to escape or develop resistance. So potentially better results overall? Potentially, yes. Better outcomes, maybe less reliance on RIT, lower risk of the virus rebounding. It also opens up possibilities for more personalized treatments, tailoring combinations to an individual's specific situation. What kinds of combinations are scientists looking at specifically? There's a lot of interest in combining therapeutic vaccines like HTI with things called latency-reversing agents or LRAs. Those are the drugs that wake up the hidden virus. Exactly, the shock part of shock and kill. And also combining vaccines or LRAs with gene editing like EBT-101. The idea is synergy making the whole greater than the sum of its parts. Can you give an example? How might EBT-101 and HTI work together? Well, one theoretical approach could be using EBT-101 first to try and eliminate the bulk of the integrated HIV DNA. Then you follow up with the HTI vaccine to train the immune system to mop up any remaining virus and provide long-lasting surveillance. But timing would be tricky. Timing, dosage, sequencing, lots of challenges to work out there. Another combination is HTI with standard art. Maybe the vaccine could boost the immune system enough to allow people to safely take breaks from their daily pills under careful monitoring, of course. That would be a huge quality of life improvement for many. It could be. And then there's the idea of combining CRISPR, like EBT-101, directly with those LRAs, the shock and kill approach, using gene editing, wake up the virus, then precisely cut it out. Again, aiming for more complete clearance, but needs extremely precise control. So when you look at EBT-101 and HTI, and these potential combinations, which approach feels more promising right now? Or is it too soon to say? It really, really depends on what you mean by promising. What's the goal? If the goal is an actual cure, complete eradication, then EBT-101, the gene editing, holds uh, perhaps the most direct potential for that. But as we've said, it's still early stage, and there are risks we need to understand better. And for managing HIV long term without daily pills. For broader use, maybe sooner, and potentially with a more established safety profile like traditional vaccines, the HTI vaccine could be seen as more promising for achieving long-term control. It might be more scalable in the near term. So they could both have a place. I think that's very likely, yes. They might not be competing approaches so much as complementary ones. In the future, treatment could be highly personalized, maybe using one, maybe the other, maybe a combination, depending on the individual patient. It really does underscore what a massive leap forward either of these would be. Moving beyond lifelong daily medication is. Well, it's the dream, isn't it? It absolutely is. Compared to where we were decades ago, and even compared to the success of current TRT, the possibility of eradication or medication-free control offers just tremendous hope to millions of people living with HIV globally. So just to recap the main points for everyone listening, we've got EBT-101, using CRISPR gene editing to physically cut out HIV DNA, aiming for a potential cure. Right. And then there's the HTI vaccine, boosting the body's own immune system to control the virus long term, potentially without daily meds. Exactly. And it's key to remember, both are still experimental. They represent incredible scientific progress, but they're not available yet outside of clinical trials. And they offer potentially very different experiences for patients different potential benefits, and different challenges. Precisely. Understanding those differences is important as this research moves forward. It really leaves you thinking about the possibilities, doesn't it? The future of HIV treatment looks incredibly dynamic. These new approaches, especially thinking about how they might be combined, it could completely change the landscape, moving from lifelong management to potential cures or long-term remission. It's a very exciting time in the field, no question. And for you, our listeners, taking that active role in your health, staying informed about these kinds of advancements is just so crucial. Absolutely. Yeah, and on that note, regardless of future treatments, the most important first step is always knowing your current status. 
Know your HIV status before exploring future treatments. Couldn't agree more. That's fundamental. So please visit HIVRNATestGuide.com. They offer quick, affordable, confidential HIV testing at over 4,500 labs across the U.S. Get tested, know your status. It's the foundation for everything else.